What's up guys, it's D Brown and um, I'm here to let you guys know how to run 10-6 in the 100. All right, so I ran 10-6 twice. And I think it surprised a lot of people the first time I ran 10-6, um, it was wind dated. And I ran 10-6-9, but it was kind of like a foreshadowing of what was to come. You know, um, I know a lot of people who are, you know, 400 meter runners and you know, a lot of people who are not pure sprinters and, you know, I just want this to be a video for you guys because I'm not a pure sprinter and I ran 10-6 and I know if I can do it, you could definitely do it and I'm here to provide you some tips to be able to achieve that because I feel like if you guys can run 10-6, it's going to be a big, like, influence in terms of your other events that you run. If you can run the 400 and you're stuck at 50 and you get down to 10-6, you're gonna go to 47 fairly fairly quickly like it's just because of the strength that you have in your event and stuff if you're an 800 meter runner i know a lot of 800 meter runners and not many can run 10 6 and if you can run 10 6 you're gonna have so much speed reserve in, ter in terms of your race so with that being said let's get to it all right so a lot of people have come to me you know i ran 10 6 when i was you know come to me asking me and stuff so i ran 10 6 when i was in college and i ran it twice my senior year um, and basically what was going on was reason why I ran the 100 was because I was injured, right? I was training to run the 400 all year and I just didn't like, I couldn't make it around the track. You know, I'll be having issues with my hamstring, my lower back. Um, and it was just very, very difficult to finish a race. So with that being said, and I'm the kind of athlete that I can't do too much distance work, especially like training for the 400. A lot of people have this thing where like the Clyde Hart system where, you know, you can kind of run slow to, to stay strong and all that stuff. And that's cool. Like, but at the same time, I need speed. It's a balance, right? You can't just have strength all the time. You need speed as well. So with me, I needed speed. And in order for me to get speed, I needed to do fast things in practice. And I'm, I'm a natural, like I'm a long sprinter as what you would call it. So you know, basically one of the things that I worked on, there was a couple of things that I worked on, but one of the, the things that I worked on, because the year before that I was a 10-9 sprinter, right? And not to say I couldn't go faster, but at that time I was also running the 200, the 400, helping out with the 4x8. It was kind of tough. That's why I say this is directly for two, four, eight runners, not necessarily pure sprinters, but it may help you guys. So check this out. One of the first things that I worked on was my turnover, all right? In order to be a sprinter, you have to have turnover all right you have to be able to go to the fifth gear all right everyone thinks you know what's the fifth gear you have to be able to go into overdrive that when you start out and you go bop 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 when it's time to turn over you can double time bop 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 like you can just go faster and 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 inc like increase your turnover and that was a big thing that i had to work on because for 100 meter runners is like they hit this gear of just piston like turnover that's just ridiculous if you look at Usain Bolt when he ran just being able to turn over at 6.5 is crazy you know so one of the things that I did personally was that I I worked on a drill that I learned and it's basically like a, a quick high knees but it's like a flat footed quick high knee drill I actually got it from um, reading uh, excerpts of Michael Johnson when he was training one of the things that he worked on in practice was doing quick high knees because he couldn't do speed work all the time. So, you know, he, he made sure that he could do like quick high knees, basically lifting your foot off of the floor, maybe like this high, like I wouldn't say six inches, maybe like eight to 10, but making sure that you apply that force down to the track and lifting it back up as hard as you can. You know, actually Jesse Owens had a similar uh, drill that he used and said they kind of had they had like a mental association with it, which was like hot coal. You know, you put your foot on the coal and then you get it off. Foot on the coal, get it off. And it's like, it teaches you that piston, like touch and go. And if you look at Trayvon Bromel, he does a fantastic job of it where when he hits the ground, he gets it right back off. And that's turnover. The ability to just place your foot, not place it, but, you know, get your foot off of the ground quick. You know, you don't want to spend time on the ground. Only time you spend time on the ground is when you apply force, but then you get off of it. So that's the one thing that I had to improve. So I did it by doing quick high knees um, and, and doing practice drills like that. And um, the other thing that I did was 60 meter flies. That was my go-to 60 meter flies. Okay, so um, 
60 meter flies for those of you who don't know 60 meter flies are basically where you have set up three cones you know you have one cone at the starting line you have another cone 30 meters out and you have another cone 30 meters out from that so basically what I would do is that I would go a couple steps before the first cone and I would do a run in which is basically like I would do a stride into a sprint and go about 90 percent heading into the first cone driving out going into the going to the second cone which is the first 30 after that I stand up straight and I turn over as quickly as I can I turn over as quickly as I can you know turnover basically comes from your arms okay so it's very important to know that it comes from the rhythm of your arms to your legs so I had to build this rhythm into my body practice per practice per practice like a bunch of practice built that I had to build that rhythm into my body so that when it's time for me to go into a race and I'm trying to turn over I know I can kill it you know what I mean so with that being said that's exactly what I did so I was going through practices and stuff working on my rhythm and when I first when I first opened up my season I ran 1084 that was a PR and I was just like because my PR before then was a 1089 so when I ran 1084 in the beginning of the season I was injured I was just like how am I able to PR and I'm injured? Like, cause I've had this built in rhythm already from, you know, training that, um, the very next meet or uh, a couple weeks later, I went 1069 and I'm just like, Whoa, where the heck is this coming from? I just skipped over 10, seven. This is my second 200. This is my third 200 in two years. How am I able to do it? And the way I was able to do it was that I taught myself how to turn over. And basically with those two drills, doing quick high knees, hot, cold style, and, and make sure you're building it into your arms. And then also, you know, doing 60 meter flies. So 60 meter flies were like the biggest help for me because, you know, I, it focused on me staying tall and turning over, you know. Um, and it's not like doing a 60 meter dash. No, the focus is not about the first 30 being as fast as possible. The goal is for that next 30 to be as fast as possible. Turning over, staying crisp, putting it on the floor, taking it off fast. Like it's all about that staying tall. And that's the one thing that I really, really had to work on and that I did work on. And those were like the two major things that helped with my turnover to go from 10-9 to 10-6. Um, you know, there's countless other things too, you know, that help, you know, I had to, I had to, you know, stay hydrated. I had to make sure that, you know, um, I stayed focused in my races, the block starts. I'm not the best block starter, but my thing is in, in order to increase your turnover, that's what you have to do. You have to master those flies. The flies are probably the most important thing. There's other track seasons that I had, they like two, three years after that, where I would try and run the 100 and I'll run like 10.1 or 10 flat. And then I remember in the race where I felt like I was stuck. I'm trying to go into this hyperdrive and I couldn't get into this hyperdrive. And I was like, why can't I, like, why can't I sprint? And the thing was, was that flies teach you how to reach that fifth gear. They teach you how to go from, you know, sprinting into high level sprinting. It's a fly. Like you're teaching your body to function at a higher rate than what you used to. And in order to work on that, you need to act, you need to constantly bring it out of you in practice. And I'm not talking about do that every single day. What I'm saying is, is that you need to build up a rhythm just like anything else. Like you're running the 400, you have to learn how to keep your splits. 800, you have to know what it feels like to go, you know, if you're trying to break 150, to do, um, you know, to run 27 per, per 200, 27, 27 is 55, 54, 55. You have to be able to know what that feels like. So it's the same thing with the 100. You have to know what it feels like to, 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 to turn over. So, you know, between those quick high knees and between those flies, I taught myself and I really enforced the idea of turning over. You know, and I was able to, you know, run 10-6. I think I could have ran faster, too. And I'm still training, and who knows? Um, I'm really optimistic at the fact I will go faster. But my point is I had to ingrain that turnover into my legs. Because if I did not ingrain it into my legs, it wasn't going to happen in a race. All right? So I hope this helped you guys a lot in terms of, uh, you know, turning over. And, and um, you can see my experience, and it can help you guys out in your future endeavors. Um, like, comment, or subscribe. Um, if you like the content, definitely subscribe and leave a comment below. You know, is there anything that you know I missed, or do you have any? Do you want any clarification upon uh, any other things? And um, you know, I'll be here. Let me know if you have any questions. All right, it's D Brown. Peace.